All right, so this video is to help you with the uh, circular homework, but before we do that, we have to look at a um, concept that you really need to know to be able to do some of these math problems. Um, now, you might have seen some of your friends doing this lab right here. I'm going to go ahead and like play it a little bit, so check it out. So they have like a little string. There's a stopper there. You notice that it pulled down. It pulled down this wire right here. When I put a weight on it down here, it pulls it down. But you notice now that I'm spinning it up here, I'm actually pulling the weight back upward. It's accelerating upward. So that is the difference between two forces that are acting against each other right there, right? So in the downward force, downward, let's see, I get a different color here. The downward force, we had force gravitational, which was this equation. G M M over R squared. But since we're near Earth, all this right here becomes little g. So actually, remember, force gravitational is equal to M times little g. This was also called weight, right? You remember that? Okay, so we're saying weight right here versus the force pulling inward to make this thing into a circle, right? Because if you think about it, there's a string going up the pipe goes out that way, the force is pulling downward, 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 downward. When it gets here, it takes a turn, and now it's pulling towards the center of a circle, right? And so that force up here is called force centripetal, right? So basically, the concept you need to know is that force centripetal equals force gravitational. And what is our force centripetal equation? mv squared over r, right? Today, you need to make sure you got all the different equations. I'll go ahead and put that on the next, on the, on the slide in just a second. But that's the concept that you're basically needing to do right there. Um, you're basically making sure that you're, make, you're doing mv squared over r can be equal to m times g as long as it's a, the, the force gravitational force gravitational is acting as the force centripetal, right? It's helping it pull this thing into a circle, all right? Okay, so let's get rid of some stuff now. So I can get rid of this, move this out to the side. Okay, and that was the whole point of that, right? Okay, now let's look at some problems here. Let's look at problem number... Uh, we really don't need 10 or 11. Those you already know. Um, but let's look at the equations real quick. Okay, so here are our equations right here. If you want, you can go ahead and pause and get those down. Um, just also remember that if you flip these guys, you got frequency, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and move this out the way, and let's work on some problems real quick. Okay, so let's look at number 12. All right, air puck, blah, blah, blah. R the radius is 1.1. Passes through a hole, center of the surface. There's a 2.3 kilogram going downward, and it's suspended, so that looks like this picture right here. Okay. What is the magnitude of force that maintains circular motion acting on the puck? Well, that's easy, because why is the puck being pulled towards the center? I just This is what I just did um, when I showed you that video right now. So what's pulling it this way? Well, it's the mass that's being pulled down by force gravitational that way. Okay. So the very fact that you said force gravitational kind of gives you a big clue, right? Okay. So my force gravitational in this case is acting as the force centripetal. And that, since we're near Earth, can be m times g, which is just the basic weight equation. So my mass, is it the... 0, 3, 2, or is it the 2.3? Well, the one pulling downward is the 2.3. So that's the one that's going to go in there, okay? So you use 9.81 times that value, and you should get this value right here. Okay, You should get the value down um, at the bottom, okay? What is the linear speed of the puck? So let's look at the second problem. What is the linear speed? Remember that we said that that is a synonym for the velocity centripetal. Okay, so linear speed is velocity centripetal, right? So I don't know what that is, but let's see what my givens are. Or what equations do I have that can plug into velocity centripetal? Well, I've got this one right here, 2 pi r over period. And I also have, boom, there's velocity centripetal there. Force centripetal is mv squared over r. Now think about which one we have more of, okay? I definitely do have the radius for both, right? But I don't have period. And so that's kind of like where we run into some problems with this equation, because I'm looking for that, but I also need this one. Whereas I do have the force centripetal already, I have the mass, and I have the radius, so I'm able to solve for V squared, or V, okay? So let's go ahead and use that one. All right, so that's going to be force centripetal equals MV squared over R. Now how do I solve for V? Multiply R on both sides. R times force equals MV squared. 
I get rid of the multiply by doing a division, right? R, F, C over M, and how do I get rid of a square? I do a square root, okay? So that's the equation I'm gonna use, and just make sure to plug in the right values into the right thing. Which mass am I gonna use? Am I gonna use the 2.3? Am I gonna use the 2.3 this time? Or am I gonna use the 0 .032? So you kind of have to think which one is the force centripetal being applied to. I know which one force gravitational is, but you have to think which one is force centripetal is, all right? All right, let's move on to something a little bit different. Um, the rest of the problems are kind of similar to that, but there's one on here I definitely wanted you to know how to do because um, it's kind of strange. Ah, didn't mean to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The rest of the problems that are related to this guy, anytime you see like a brick or something like that hanging from something like here, these problems are going to all be kind of the same. Um, but I do want to show you something that's kind of weird. So let's look at the next one. All right. Um, so let's look at 17 because 17 is kind of conceptually really strange, but it's not that bad. Um, let me just show you kind of how to set this one up real quick. So an airplane flying in a horizontal circle at a speed of 100 meters per second. So automatically, I'm going to go ahead and just draw this out. Um, so I do the tangential speed 100, just so I know. Um, an 86 kilogram pilot, so I go like there. M is 86. Okay. Um, wants the centripetal does not want the centripetal acceleration to exceed 6.3 times free fall acceleration. Find the minimum radius, so I'm looking for the looking for the radius, looking for r there, r equals question mark of the plane, and you're going to use g equals 9.81. Okay, so the key here is that you don't know what this is. This you don't know. You don't know the radius there. Um, but you know his mass, you know his velocity. What you're looking for now is the radius based on an acceleration that you were given, right? The acceleration centripetal can't be more than 6.35 G, uh, g, little g, right? And little g, we do know it's 9.81. Does that make sense? So when you're saying like g-forces, it's multiplying times um, free fall acceleration. So it kind of gives you a sensation when you drop and change direction really quickly like this. When you go, it makes you feel like you're, uh, you're accelerating really, really fast and you get heavier, right? So that's what g-forces mean. Okay, so in this problem, your givens are, you do have the, you have acceleration, and that's 9.81 times whatever the g-force was that they had, so 6.35 in this problem's case. Okay, well, I'm also given the velocity centripetal of 100, and I'm also given the mass, and that's going to be 86. Okay, our unknown in this one is the radius that we would need, the max radius we would need so we don't exceed this right here, right? So our equation is going to be what equation fits all that? Let's see. Okay, well, okay, let's see what we got here. Let's move some stuff out the way. So we can see a little bit better. All right, so automatically I'm probably thinking this one, right? But let's go through it a little bit more. Well, I got V, I have mass, but I don't have force. So that's a problem because then I would have two missing variables. Uh, this one's no good because there's no radius. There's radius here, but I don't have period. Okay? So that's no good. Um, but then look here, acceleration. And we have velocity, which I am looking for. Or no, I don't, I don't. I have this one. And I also need radius, right? So this is the one I'm going to use right here. So you see how I did that? I kind of had to go through and see what I had and didn't have. And then I make a decision that way. All right, so let's go ahead and try that out. Acceleration centripetal equals V squared over R. I'm solving for R. Remember, it's a top and a bottom. So how do I solve for it? I can just swap these out, right? R equals V squared over A. And then from there, I got my 100. This would be my 6.35 times 9.81, right? And then I would be able to solve for that. All right, cool. Um, that's pretty much how you do most of these right here. If there are any other weird ones, go ahead and let me know. But um, I look through and pretty much all of them should be some derivation of that. All right, good luck.